All right, hello everybody, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about rational functions because they're helpful in competition sometimes, and they're key to algebra too. But we'll be talking about graphing them, analyzing them, and inequalities. So let's get into it. A rational function is in the form p of x over q of x, where p and q are polynomial functions. Um, we'll first graph the simple, um, the simplest rational functions, the parent functions, right? y equals one over x, what would that look like? Here we have our graph. Um, so if x equals one, y equals one. If x equals two, y equals one half. If x equals three, y equals one third, and so on. Keeps getting closer and closer to um, zero, but it never reaches it. And then um, if you plug in one half, we get two. If you plug in a third, we get three, and so on. So it gets closer and closer to infinity as um, the um, x goes close to zero, but it never reaches it. Now, um, what if x is negative? If we had negative one, or uh, yeah, if we had negative one, we'd have negative one. If we had negative two, we'd have negative one half, and so on. Same thing, basically. And then it'll get closer to negative infinity, but never reach it. Um. If it was um, zero, or if it was, um, let's first talk about negative one half. That'll get negative two, and we and you see the same thing happens here, right? It just keeps getting closer to that um, y-axis. And what if it was zero? Plug in zero, we get one over zero, which is undefined. So which undefined that at that point, as you can see, uh, it there is no point. It just keeps getting closer closer to negative infinity from one side and infinity from the other side as x gets closer to zero we'll study and um this um x equals zero we see it's like going negative infinity here and then infinity on the other side um that's a that's an example of a discount of a discontinuity we'll talk about that later on so now what how would we graph y equals x squared plug in one we get the same point Plug in 2, we get 1 over 4. Plug in 3, we get closer and closer. So we're getting closer, but at a faster rate. What if we plug in 1 half? We get 4, right? So it's the same thing this way again. We're kind of just getting closer, but at a faster rate. Alright. Um, and then, what if x was negative? Well, if x was negative, we'd, we see that we'd, um, we wouldn't get it. Neg we, the y would never be negative. If you plug in negative one, we get negative. Uh, we get one because negative one squared is one, and one over one is one. If you plug in one half, we get um, four, and so on. And if you plug in two, or negative two, sorry, um, we get a fourth, and we see that continues. So we realize that this is. We see the difference, right? Um, well, uh, the blue is increasing faster, or decreasing faster, however you look at it, and is never negative. While um, one, while the white is could be negative and uh, increases and decreases slower. All right. So now let's talk. Let's analyze a graph of any um, rational function. Um, if p of x was equal to zero, then the whole thing would be equal to zero. Thus, the zeros of p of x are the zeros of y. If q of x equals zero, though, we'd have p of something over zero, and that's undefined. So, the zeros of q of x are undefined. Now, what does undefined mean, really? It means there's no value at it, right? So, and we see that here, at zero, right, it's undefined. And that's what we call an asymptote. An asymptote is where it gets closer and closer to the value, but, nev but never reaches it. So um, the zeros of q of x, that x value will that makes q of x zero, will be a vertical asymptote uh, of the of the function overall function or a whole. Um, let's talk about the difference between them. So. A vertical asymptote is the one is a 
basically a vertical line that in that uh, it keeps getting closer and closer to. Like in this case, it gets closer and closer. In this case, um, this is a vertical asymptote. All right. So now, um, yeah. But how do we define? And then a hole is um just if we had a function, right? Like that. We've st we've studied hole. We've studied uh, holes before, but Let's say it's undefined at this point. We put a hole there, and then we just continue it. That means that it's defined everywhere, but it's not at that point. So how do we tell the difference between which is which? Well, let's talk about that. Let's say that x minus r is a root, or is a factor of um, p of x and q of x. All right. So we have x minus r times um let's say yeah we have times p of x um let's say p1 of x actually oh, and that over x minus r times q1 of x where p1 and q1 are p and q divided by x minus r respectively so over so overall this is the same as y all right you just factored one factor, which happened to be the same from both of them. Um, notice that x minus r is a zero of p of x, right? So that means that it'll be a zero of the y function, but it's also a zero of q of x, so it's undefined there. Um, so that means that it could be a vertical asymptote or a hole, or it could possibly be a zero. Um, we could also cancel it out and get p1 of x over q1 of x. And let's say this happens, a part of the graph happens to be like that, right? Now let's say um, if we did not cancel it, we'd have it undefined. Let's say this is r. We'd have it undefined at this point. So what would that mean? Is it an asymptote? Well, it can't be, because if you cancel it, it'll essentially be the same thing, and we'd have this. Um, could it be a zero? Well, it won't always be a zero, right? Um, that's not, it's, it won't always be that. So, it's probably a hole. That. So, realize that if x is equal to r, right, at this point, then x minus r equals zero. And we cancelled out zeros. You can't cancel out zeros, right? Um, you can't have 0 times 3 over 0 times 4 is equal to 3 fourths, right? Because they cancel out the zeros. You can't cancel zeros in fractions, right? So, we really did a wrong thing. We can't do that. We can't cancel it. But, cancelling it makes sense for everywhere except for R. If x is not equal to r, then x minus r is not equal to 0, so we can cancel. So really, what happens is if p of x and q of x have the same factor, then that factor, um, the if, if, if that's in the form x minus r, then at x equals r, we have a whole. And if we can just act like... And if we cancel it, then we can act like everywhere except for x equals r, we can act like it's just p1 of x over q1 of x. Hope that made sense. Now, vertical asymptote is if um, that factor is not, uh, you know, it's not a factor of p of, p of x2. Then we just have an asymptote. Um, so, basically, if... We had x minus s times q2 of x. Oh, and that uh, the denominator. Right, alright. So now that means that the asymptote of this function will be at um, y, no, sorry x equals s because that's where it's undefined and it's not a whole so it won't cancel 
a hole is where they both have the common factor, and an asymptote is where it's just a factor of q of x. So yeah, that makes hopefully that made sense, right? Now um, let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. So if we had p of x over q of x, um, we need to look at the degrees. So let's so we need we look at the, the degree of p and the degree of q. All right. So how do we find the horizontal asymptote? Well, if the degree of p is greater than the degree, sorry, let's talk about if the degree of p is less than the degree of q, that means we'd have a, a horizontal asymptote at x, sorry, y equals, y equals zero, right? Now, let's say that we had the degree of P equal to the degree of Q. We'd have a horizontal asymptote at Y equals, and then, um, God, okay, let's say P of X is equal to A1 X to the N uh, uh, sorry, a1, say a1 x to the, you know, a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a1 x plus a naught, and then let's say q of x equals b n x to the n plus b n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, uh, actually let's say bm, plus dot dot dot, plus b1x, plus b0, alright, so now, um, that means, so yeah, um, that means, uh, instead of, actually instead of using degree, we can just say, um, the degree of P is N, and the degree of Q is M, so N is less than M, and N equals M, right? Okay, so now Y would be, so now I'll just, let's get back to this. If N equals M, then Y is equal to, then the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote is at Y equals, um, Y equals A N over B N. So you divide the leading coefficients. Now, um, if we had the degree of P is greater than the degree of Q, that means that there is, oh yeah, that means that um, N is greater than M, um, no horizontal asymptote, but there is an oblique asymptote. What's an oblique asymptote? An oblique asymptote is one that's diagonal. All right, so now how do we find the equation? That, that's gonna be a line, right? So how do we find the equation of that line? Well, here's what we do. Um, let's say P of X, right? Um, divided by q of x, if we actually divide it out, that would, we'd get a of x times, um, b of x plus r of x, right, where r is the remainder, a, and, and then, um, uh, Wait, my brain froze. Sorry, um, yeah. So if we divide it out, we get a of x times b of x plus r of x. Alright? Um. Yeah. So now, um. 
let's say we had we remember long division let's do a quick review let's say we divide we get x actually to 7 get x plus 3 and that wait sorry no I think it's just a of x right plus and then um the remainder would be um what would the remainder be let's say we had 5 divided by 2 we'd get 2 um and then a remainder of 1 right but that remainder of 1 means we get 1 over 2 so we divide by that so in this case what we do is we take the remainder divided by um x plus divided by um, x plus 2 right so that would be 1 over x plus 2 in this case and here we'd have r of x over um q of x all right so um the oblique asymptote um Um, yeah, so now the oblique asymptote would be in the form A of X, I think. Um, I think so. Wait. Yeah, um, sorry, yeah, so now it'll be in the form A of X. But, let's say the degree of p of x say that the degree of p of x um was greater than like the degree of q of x right that's how we get the oblique asymptote but an oblique asymptote cannot be a parabola right it cannot be a degree of two or more so what happens is if um kind of lie here um then we get none, but if n is equal to m plus 1, then we get the oblique asymptote. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, that way, when we divide it, then the, gre then the degree of a of x would be um, 1, and we want a linear oblique asymptote, right? Alright, so now that's basically on graphing so what basically what you do is you first find the vertical asymptotes let me so basically use a dotted line to refer to an asymptote so number one you find these right number um number one you do that right number two you find if there are any horizontal asymptotes um, or oblique asymptotes. To number three, you find um, zeros. Then number four, oh yeah, you also need to find holes. Then after that, you can find um, general and helpful points. To help you know see how it all pans out like typically if you first find your asymptotes and you get something like this you might notice you can have a lot of things you, you have to also use your logic you, you notice that you can't have you, you have to it has to follow the vertical line test right so either and that too you need to use old asymptotes otherwise there's no point in them so either you can have something like that and then like that Maybe then like that, or you might have something like that, and then something like that, and then something like that. You can have many things, right? Or maybe it's mostly those two. But yeah. Um. So what? What? Which one would it be? You have to plug in a point. You have to plug in, let's say, x equals zero, 
or whatever, and then you get one point, and then you can tell the rest. And the zeros also help. So yeah, um, that's how you do that. Now let's talk about inequality, rational function. So let's say you had um, y. Actually, you know what? It doesn't matter what the inequality is. You can use a sign chart from remember that remember sign charts. You can have um, let's say let's say p of x is equal to a n times x minus r one times x minus r two times x minus r three dot times x minus r n. Let's say q of x is equal to um, b n times x minus s one times x minus s two times x minus s three da, 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 times x minus s n. All right. So now um. What you can do is you can create your sign chart. Remember the sign charts? That was fun. You can um, plot all the zeros of all of the functions x of every single factor x minus r i and x minus s i, right? Or sorry, not x minus. We're just plotting the r and s's. So now, what do you do now? Um, well, we do our normal stuff, right? We can, first of all, let's move this. God, okay. Let's... All right, now we have more space to do our drawing. So now let's say we had, um, yeah, we had all our stuff, right? R1 x minus r2 dot 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 x minus rn x minus s1 x minus s2 dot x minus s oh sorry god i did it again this is m and this is m right x minus s m alrighty so now we look at all of them right we create a little sign chart right positive 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 negative 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 right whatever and um, you know what? We can also create a little divider here to help keep track, right? Between the R's and the wait, no, wrong. I did not do that divider, right? It's gonna be here, right? So we look at the dividers. We look at R1, and then we look at the S. We look at the RI, then we look at the SI, or right, the X minus RI, then the X minus SI, and then we see um, positive, negative, whatever, right? Then we look at um, if you multiply all the ris like their signs, then you get something, right? Let's say positive, and then divide, and then you look at this, you do the same thing with those, and then you get negative. Let's say then you get negative. If you divide a positive by a negative, you get a negative. So yeah, and then you kind of um, that's basically, and then after you do that, once you look at the um, right, then that kind of helps you find like where it's, you know, like the, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to find where it's positive, where it's negative, basically. If, remember, um, when you had like three is greater than P of X over Q of X, then we're not looking at positive or negative. So we, uh, minus three, and now if you get zero, now that is equal to P of X, minus 3 q of x over q of x and that is still a rational function so now we have a new rational function to analyze and now we are looking at positive or negative since zero kind of means if it's greater than it's positive it's less than it's negative right so yeah and then we use our sign chart i hope that made sense um I won't go through any examples in this video since it's pretty long, but if you guys need any examples, then um, tell us in the comments below and we'll be happy to make another video. So yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.